we come together again this Sunday and how it seems to be all too frequent in the midst of world turmoil, in the attacks in France, the uh, turmoil in Turkey. But we come here each week in a continual reality of the interior struggles and sufferings and challenges that all of us face. And our readings today, I think, give us insight into a most basic truth that we need to always remember to have psychological and personal and spiritual well-being. It is that we have to look beyond what is seen and we have to look to the unseen, the constant outpouring of God's action and love always present to us. So often, particularly in times of tragedy or difficulty, we allow the things that we see to tempt us to great anger or agitation or anxiety instead of remembering that God is involved in all things, that he is constantly acting in and through all things. And so, in fact, the only way that you and I can experience the fullness of his love and his presence and his peace is in the events of each day, just the way things are. I think that's the insight of our first reading. The Lord appears to Abraham in that image of those three men. It's an ordinary encounter that all of us have each and every day. Abraham responds, not with some remarkable action, but simply in the acts of hospitality, sharing a meal. And then we are told that Abraham is richly blessed as Sarah will have a son. Don't you see that this is the precise way that God continues to work each day in our lives? He is in all things and he is present to use all things and all situations and circumstances to share with us his joy and his peace. His presence is the one constant reality that is always present. He's always with us to give us his blessing. This, of course, is dramatically seen in the event of our gospel. God appears, not veiled as in the first reading, but truly and really present in the person of Jesus Christ. Martha and Mary welcome him. Mary prepare, or Martha prepares the meal. Mary is sitting beside him, listening to him. But then here is where everything breaks down. Martha is anxious and she is frustrated. We need to see that she's not upset with the situation itself, but she's upset because she thinks things should be different than what the situation is. Somehow Mary is not acting properly. Martha does not accept her role. Martha does not accept the way things are. She does not trust that what has been given to her has to be the best. She complains. <laughs> as all too often we do, succumbing to that temptation to want things our way. And of course, this is most prevalent when we have great suffering and how much suffering there is in our lives and in our world. My dear grandmother used to say, half the world is crying. <laughs> I think it's far greater than half. And St. Paul, in the first words of our second reading, says something truly remarkable. He says, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, the church. Again, Paul sees this unseen reality that suffering unites us to Christ. Our suffering is a means of being connected to his suffering, which is the cause of our salvation. And St. Paul hints at something that I think we should always try to remember, that suffering is Eucharistic. Think about it. We come here each Sunday to be united to Christ in this most blessed sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, to receive him and to enjoy the indescribable power of communion in him. Hopefully we experience a feeling of deep peace and consolation that comes with this intimate union. But can't we see that then this sacramental reality becomes ongoing in our lives? 
how the experiences of each day and the sufferings of each day only perpetuate or give a lived context of what it is we celebrate here. It's that when we suffer, he is uniting us to himself in his suffering so that we too, like St. Paul, fill up or complete the ongoing saving activity of God. So in the same way that you and I are not to wish things different than what they are, since that is, in a sense, a repudiation of God's will, we are also to know with certainty that in every situation, in every circumstance, God is present, seeking to unite us to himself. Let us strive to remember to always look at the unseen reality so that our personal well-being will not be determined by the changing and imperfect realities of our world, so marred as they are by great evil and sin, but our well-being will be determined by the constant and unchanging reality of the infinite love God has for each and every one of us. Then we will avoid that agitation of Martha, and rather in all things, we will be like Mary, gazing always on the Lord, listening to Him, cognizant of His presence, and filled with His peace.